Hello and welcome to News Tonight. I'm Tina Jha. Before we begin the bulletin, I would like to appeal to all our viewers to stay safe from the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Remember to wear your face masks, wash your hands and face regularly, and ensure that you maintain physical distancing whenever you step outside. Remember, we are still in the midst of the pandemic, and these simple precautions are all that it takes to defeat it. And now the headlines of the day. Lok Sabha passes Mines and Minerals Development Amendment Bill. Union Minister Prahlad Joshi calls it a big step to achieve self-reliance in the mineral sector. Asserts it will usher transparency in auction and allocation of mines. The lower house also approves Constitution Scheduled Caste Order Amendment Bill. National tourism policy to be announced soon. Union Minister Prahlad Singh Patel tells Rajya Sabha that notwithstanding effects of COVID-19 pandemic, target of doubling foreign tourist arrivals will be achieved by 2024. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu underscores the need to improve productivity in the upper house tells members not to make accusations during zero hour. Also deprecates defiance by members making comments without the chair's permission. Filing of nominations for single phase elections ends in Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. Filing of nomination also ends for the third phase for 31 seats in West Bengal and 40 seats in Assam. And battling the surge in COVID-19 cases, Maharashtra enforces new restrictions till the 31st of March. All private offices to function at 50% capacity. Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh to screen road passengers from neighbouring states. Punjab imposes night curfew in 11 districts. The Lok Sabha on Friday passed the Mines and Minerals Development Amendment Bill 2021. This bill seeks to amend the Mines and Mineral Development and Regulation Act. Speaking on the bill, Minister Prahlad Joshi said, that it has been brought to reform the mining sector in the country. Also terming the bill historic, the minister said the changes will help create employment opportunities and allow the private sector with enhanced technology in mining activities. According to the minister, India produces 95 minerals and has the same potential like South Africa and Australia, but still we import minerals like gold and coal. Ma स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स को हम के साथ बैठ के समय निर्धारण करते हैं आफ्टर फिक्सिंग द टाइम इन कंसल्टेशन विद स्टेट इफ दे डू नॉट गो फॉर ऑक्शन देन शुड यू लीव इट लाइक दैट तो हमारा जो रिच मिनरल्स है ऐसे ही ऐसे ही रहना चाहिए और हम करोड़ों करोड़ों रुपए खर्चा करके इंपोर्ट करते हैं इसके बारे में सोचना चाहिए Government of India doesn't want any power and entire revenue goes to the state government. The lower house also passed the Constitution Scheduled Caste Order Amendment Bill 2021 on Friday. The bill seeks to modify the list of scheduled castes in Tamil Nadu by grouping of seven castes which presently exist as separate ones. Speaking on the bill, Social Justice and Empowerment Minister Thawar Chand Gehlot said, that no caste is being included and omitted with this legislation. He also said only the regrouping of some castes will be done so that the aspiration of these communities can be fulfilled. The minister said the government is committed towards the welfare of the scheduled castes and several historic decisions were taken in this regard. <laughs> परंतु ये सात जातियां ऐसी हैं जिनके प्रमाण पत्र अनेक वर्षों से बनाए गए हैं और वो अमान्य नहीं हो इसलिए इन सातों जातियों का उल्लेख 
ब्रिकेट में किया जाएगा और मुख्य जाति देवेंद्र कुला वेलालर होगा Tourism Minister Prahlad Singh Patel has said that the country will soon have a national tourism policy. Replying to the discussion on the working of the tourism ministry, the minister said despite the fact that 2020 was a zero year, he is confident that the number of foreign tourists will double by 2024. The tourism minister also thanked the domestic tourists saying that they supported Indian tourism in these testing times. और टूरिज्म पॉलिसी हमने सारे राज्यों को पहुंचाई है सारे स्टेक होल्डर्स को पहुंचाई है एक महीने के आसपास हो गया है बहुत जल्दी हमारी कोशिश होगी क्योंकि लगातार जो प्रश्न उठते हैं वो इसी बात पर उठते हैं कि अगर टूरिज्म पॉलिसी बनेगी कि नहीं बनेगी पर मुझे लगता है कि इस बदलाव के बाद जो पॉलिसी बनेगी वो दुनिया में वही स्थान प्राप्त करने के लिए बनेगी जो भारत का लक्ष्य है और हम पूरा विश्वास करते हैं कि दो में हम पैंसठवें स्थान से पाँच वर्षों में चौंतीसवें स्थान पर आए थे हमारी यात्रा चौंतीस में से एक नंबर की जानी थी एक वर्ष शून्य वर्ष हो गया लेकिन उपसभापति जी मेरा भरोसा है देश की जनता पर यहाँ की संस्कृति पर यहाँ के मूल्यों पर हमारे देश के नेतृत्व पर कि मैं आंकड़ा बदलूंगा नहीं जो लक्ष्य हमने तय किया है 2024 में वो प्राप्त करेंगे डोमेस्टिक टूरिस्ट को नहीं संभाल पा रहे तो कल के दिन जब विदेशी पर्यटक आएगा तब हम क्या करेंगे ये चुनौती देश के सामने है मैं स्वीकार करता हूँ एक तरफ वो इंडस्ट्री है वो महानगर है वो प्रदेश है जो कोरोना के कारण खड़े नहीं हो पा रहे उनका कष्ट अलग है उनकी चुनौतियां अलग हैं। लेकिन जो चीज जहां पर कोरोना नहीं है और डोमेस्टिक टूरिज्म के कारण सेचुरेशन है वहां पर अगर विदेशी पर्यटक आएगा तो क्या हम संभाल पाएंगे ये तो चुनौती अलग है उसकी तैयारियां भी सरकार कर रही है वाइल पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन द डिस्कशन ऑन द वर्किंग ऑफ द टूरिज्म मिनिस्ट्री ऑपोजिशन मेंबर्स डिमांडेड एडिकुएट स्टेप्स to pull out the sector from the crisis as it has been the worst hit due to the pandemic members also urged the government to initiate measures to get the tourism sector back on track initiating the discussion trs member suresh reddy said that this sector has witnessed a major setback due to the pandemic and lakhs of jobs have been lost members cutting across party lines took part in the discussion let's listen it tiyo has suggested foreign tourists which are at only 1.23% may be increased to 3% you are spending 80 crores on promotion but niti ayog says the staff is not fully equipped adequately to really support the promotion so that has to be looked into sir covid pita hai pura sansar isse pareshan ho gaya tha lekin uske bawajood bhi pure sadan ko is baat ki sarahna karni chahiye आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने जिस प्रकार से त्वरित गति से कार्यवाही किया कि आज भारत उससे उबर चुका है और दूसरे देशों से भी लोग वहां अपने को कोविड से भी बचाने के लिए भारत आकर करके टूरिज्म को बढ़ावा दे रहे हैं यह हमारी सबसे बड़ी उपलब्धि रही गवर्नमेंट एज अनाउंस सम न्यू स्कीम सम ऑफ देम आर अंडर द रिव्यू ऑफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इज इट the important programs the example sir swadesh darshan scheme sanctioned 76 projects in 2014 and 15 but till now only 9 project have been completed another 67 project has still pending the increased allocation to tourism infrastructure that uh, one uh, honorable member was talking about though encouraging is not enough it's it's not even 1000 crore we need substantially much more uh, substantially more than that because the go state to government to involve the state governments in the promotion of tourism and one more thing we have to do is to involve the our uh, uh, external affairs ministry and all our embassies the world over should have pamphlets on the tourist spots of this country log videsh se aate the kashmir ko dekhne ke liye Unfortunately, वक्त ऐसा है कि विदेशी टूरिस्ट नहीं आते अभी धीरे धीरे डोमेस्टिक टूरिस्ट आने शुरू किए हैं इस बात को हमें ठीक करना होगा इस इमेज को जो इमेज की वहाँ हमारी जान को खतरा है वहाँ सिक्योरिटी नहीं है उसको हमें बहुत ही अग्रेसिवली ठीक करना होगा 
need for coordination between states and centers for development of tourism post-COVID. And the tenth and last point they wish to say is conferring an official status of industry to the tourism sector because they are not taken otherwise seriously. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman provided clarity on import duty and GST levied on medicines for spinal muscular atrophy. She denied that taxes levied on these medicines run in crores, as claimed earlier by Congress MP Vivek Tanka. The issue was raised by the Congress MP earlier this week during Zero Hour. I would like to apprise the House that assessment made by Honorable MP regarding the tax component may not be right. All life-saving drugs imported from personal, for personal use are exempt from basic customs duty, either unconditionally or for either unconditionally for specified medicines or subject to a, cert a certificate to be issued import of stated medicine for personal use for treatment of spinal muscular atrophy is entitled to this concession. However, such life-saving medicines attract GST rate of 5%, which comes to the which comes to about 80 lakhs in this case. GST rates are prescribed on the recommendation of the GST Council. The Council has vested in the Union Finance Minister a power to grant ad hoc exemption on case-to-case -case basis in the circumstances of exceptional nature. In exercise of this power, ad hoc exemptions from IGST has been allowed for such imports on a case-to-case -case basis. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu made an important appeal to the members for enhancing the productivity and efficiency of the House. He asked the members to confine to the subject matter of zero-hour submissions. Besides, he also stressed that allegations and counter-allegations made by any side fail to address the real issues. The Chairman clarified on the premise of admissibility of the notices of zero-hour and denounced the action of defying the Chair or making running commentary in the House without the Chair's permission. I only suggest to the members, please see to it that your issues, zero hour issues, are issues of a larger public interest and then current in nature and also on a specific issue. The second one is that we have seen today also in area, some members tend to drag governments and then make criticism and all. What I am saying is, you can definitely refer to an incident, but making allegation against state government, which is not here to defend, against even central government, because we have not given to particular minister or concern to respond here, is not going to serve any problem. And the third issue I would like to tell the members is, some members have developing a habit of making running commentary while sitting. That also is not going to serve any problem, any, any issue. Any solution can be found only if you bring it through proper system to the notice of the chairman. And chairman, if he thinks it fit, it is appropriate to accept that permission will be given. Moving on, let's now get you all the news and views from the poll-bound states. Filing of nominations for the third phase of assembly polls ended on Friday in West Bengal and Assam. 22nd of March is the last date for withdrawal of candidature. 31 assembly constituencies of West Bengal will go to polls on the 6th of April in the third phase. Elections for 294 seats in West Bengal Assembly will be held in eight phases. The first phase will be held on the 27th of March for 30 seats while the second phase of polling will take place on the 1st of April for 30 seats as well. 40 assembly constituencies of Assam will go to polls on the 6th of April in the third phase. Elections here are being held in three phases for the 126 member assembly. In the first phase, 47 seats will go to polls on the 27th of March, while the second phase of polling will be held on the 1st of April for 39 seats. Filing of nominations also ended on Friday for the assembly elections in Kerala, Tamil Nadu and the Union Territory of Puducherry, where polling is being held in a single phase on the 6th of April. 
The nomination process also closed for the Lok Sabha bypolls for Tamil Nadu's Kanyakumari and Kerala's Malapuram seats. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be in West Bengal and Assam on Saturday and Sunday. He will be addressing rallies in Kharagpur in West Bengal and Chabua in Assam. In a Twitter message, the Prime Minister said in his speeches, he will elaborate upon the BJP's development agenda. He added, it is clear that both states of West Bengal and Assam want to elect the NDA in the upcoming polls. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi is also on a two-day visit to the poll-bound state of Assam. He held several public meetings on Friday. In an interaction with students of Lahawal College in Dibrugarh district, Rahul Gandhi said more and more youth should enter politics. He assured that the Citizenship Amendment Act will not be implemented in Assam if his party is voted to power in the state in the upcoming assembly elections. He also said that in Assam, Congress has given five guarantees, which include five lakh government jobs to the youth in five years, up to 200 units of free electricity per household, 365 rupees daily wage to the tea workers, and 2,000 rupees per month to the housewives. Assam mein 5 lakh logo ko hum rozgar dege. Hum jo Assam ka hai Assam ki janta ko dege. Aapki shiksha ke liye aapke swast ke liye Assam ki sarkar paisa dalegi nai sarkari school Assam Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma filed his nomination papers for the Jalukbari Legislative Assembly seat on Friday. He filed his papers at the Kamrup Metro Deputy Commissioner's Office in Guwahati. Biswa Sarma also held a road show on his way to the Deputy Commissioner's Office where he filed his nomination papers. Union Minister Narendra Singh Tomar, Assam Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonawal, Manipur's Chief Minister N. Biren Singh and BJP's Assam in charge Bejant Panda, BJP National General Secretary Dilip Saikia and several other top leaders accompanied him during his filing of nomination. Himanta Biswa Sarma has been winning the Jalukbari seat consecutively from 2001, thrice as a Congress candidate and in 2016 as a BJP candidate. The government of Uttar Pradesh, led by Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, completed four years in office on Friday. On the occasion, he released a development book describing the government's achievement over the last four years. The Chief Minister said that Uttar Pradesh has emerged as the growth engine of the country, adding that the state is moving towards becoming the biggest economy in the country. Talking about the COVID-19 pandemic, Yogi Adityanath said that the state's COVID-19 management was praised at the national level as well as by the World Health Organization. The Uttar Pradesh health infrastructure में सबसे कमजोर माना जाता था। देश के अंदर सबसे बड़ी आबादी के बावजूद कोरोना के एक वर्ष के इस कालखंड के दौरान आप सब ने इस बात को महसूस किया होगा कि उत्तर प्रदेश का प्रबंधन बेहतरीन रहा है इसकी प्रशंसा। वैश्विक संगठन विश्व स्वास्थ्य संगठन ने भी इसकी प्रशंसा की कोरोना प्रबंधन में हम लोग सफल रहे क्योंकि आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी का मार्गदर्शन इस दिशा में प्राप्त होता था द चीफ मिनिस्टर फर्दर सेड दैट अंडर द गवर्नमेंट्स डेवलपमेंट स्कीम्स 40 लाख फैमिलीज हैव बीन गिवन हाउसिंग फैसिलिटी एंड 1 करोड़ 38 लाख फैमिलीज गॉट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कनेक्शन while the connectivity of every village has also improved in the last four years. Kendra Sarkar ki ve sabhi yojna hai. Pradhan Mantri Ujjola yojna, Pradhan Mantri Sobhagya yojna, Pradhan Mantri Ujjala yojna, Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman ki yojna. Yani is se prajudi vi jitni bhi yojna hai thi, in sabhi yojna hai mein Uttar Pradesh, jahaan pehle, बहुत पीछे हुआ करता था 
अपने एक बेहतरीन कार्य पद्धति के कारण पहले स्थान पर है द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ डिफेंस साइन अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद भारत डायनामिक्स लिमिटेड ऑन फ्राइडे फॉर सप्लाई ऑफ फोर थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी मिलन टू टी एंटी टैंक गाइडेड मिसाइल्स टू द इंडियन आर्मी डिफेंस पब्लिक सेक्टर अंडरटेकिंग विल सप्लाई द मिसाइल्स एट अ कॉस्ट ऑफ वन थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड एंड एट्टी एट करोड़ रुपीज दीज मिसाइल्स कैन बी फायर फ्रॉम ग्राउंड एज वेल एज वहीकल बेस्ड लॉन्चर्स एंड विल एनहैंस ऑपरेशनल प्रिपेयरनेस ऑफ द आर्म्ड फोर्सेज दिस प्रोजेक्ट विल फर्दर बूस्ट द मेक इन इंडिया इनिशियटिव ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट and us secretary of defense lloyd james austin called on prime minister narendra modi on friday the prime minister outlined his uh, vision for the strategic partnership between both countries he said that india and the us are committed to a strategic partnership that is a force for global good the prime minister also emphasized on the important role of bilateral defense cooperation in the india us ties US Defense Secretary Austin also met National Security Advisor Ajit Doval discussions on regional and international issues as well as ways to further boost bilateral defense and security ties were also held The US Secretary of Defense who is on a 3 day visit to India is also scheduled to meet Defense Minister Rajnath Singh on Saturday The Central Reserve Police Force is working in a committed manner to implement government policies in left-wing extremism affected areas. Minister of State for Home Nityanand Rai said on Friday. Speaking on the 82nd CRPF Raising Day parade, the minister said that CRPF paved the way for peace and development in left-wing extremism prone areas of Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. He also said that the force has played a key role in tackling terrorism and separatism in Jammu and Kashmir. Ab sirf aapka itihas sangharsho ka nahi, aapka itihas safalta aur vijay ka itihas hai. Chahe Jammu Kashmir mein atankvad evam algaavad ki samasya se aap sangharsh karte hue jis prakar se atankvad ko aur algaavad ko आपने बहुत हद तक समाप्त किया है पूर्वोत्तर राज्यों में विद्रोह की समस्याओं से निपटते हुए मध्य भारत में वामपंथी उग्रवाद से प्रभावित राज्यों में माओवादी की समस्याओं से लोहा लेना तो है ही सीआरपीएफ आंतरिक सुरक्षा हेतु देश का सबसे अग्रगणी बल है द डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ सीआरपीएफ कुलदीप सिंह से that crpf plays a crucial role in dealing with nationalism and the law and order situation in the northeast has shown remarkable improvement and talking about the ongoing coronavirus vaccination drive in the country over 4 crore vaccine doses have been administered across the country so far some states meanwhile are reporting a surge in the daily new cases of covid-19 Maharashtra, Punjab, Karnataka, Gujarat and Chhattisgarh together have contributed about 80.63% of new cases. Nearly 40,000 new cases have been reported in just the last 24 hours, taking the COVID-19 tally to over 1 crore 15 lakh. With 154 new fatalities also reported in the last 24 hours, the total death toll increased to 1,59,370. With this India's active case load has reached 2,71,000 comprising 2.82% of the total positive cases in the country. The total recoveries crossed 1 crore 10 lakh with 20,654 recoveries in the last 24 hours. However, the recovery rate has further dropped to 96.26%. and several states are reimposing restrictions amid rising cases of coronavirus maharashtra has issued fresh measures which will be in place till the 31st of march all theaters and auditoriums will now operate at 50% capacity while entry for people without proper wearing of masks is banned besides private offices except those related to health and other essential services will also function at 50% of their capacity Amid the surge in COVID-19 cases in Maharashtra, in Maharashtra, 
The Madhya Pradesh government has also banned the movement of passenger buses between both these states starting Saturday. In Punjab too, restrictions have been imposed on cinema and uh, cinema halls and mall capacities. Cinema halls have been asked to operate at 50% capacity. At not more than 100 persons will be allowed inside a mall at any given time. Besides, all educational institutions have also been closed till the end of this month. In 11 worst hit districts, all social gatherings have also been banned and only 20 people can attend funerals and weddings. Gujarat has sealed its borders in view of the rising infections in Maharashtra. Night curfew has been imposed in Ahmedabad and Surat from 9 a.m. to 6 a.m. I beg your pardon, from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Malls and cinema halls will also be closed on weekends, that's Saturday and Sunday. Examinations have been cancelled in eight high caseload cities. So that's it from us in this bulletin. But before we leave, I once again appeal to all our viewers to continue to take necessary precautions in order to stay safe from the ongoing pandemic. Remember to wear your face masks, wash your hands and face regularly and ensure that you maintain physical distancing whenever you step outside. These simple precautions are all that it takes on our part to defeat the ongoing pandemic. Take care of yourselves and your families. Good night and thank you for your time.